welcome to the Work Trends Podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan Mbiro. Every week I interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And be sure to check out our Work Trends Twitter chat events calendar located at talentculture.com on the podcast page. Hello and welcome to the Talent Culture Work Trends Podcast, brought to you by our special guest and sponsor, Kudos. We are so glad you're joining us here at Talent Culture, the place to find meaningful connections at work. Speaking of Talent Culture, if you haven't already heard, we are very excited to reveal our brand new website soon. It's going to include a better podcast experience on the site for all who visit and listen to our episodes. It's coming soon, so be on the lookout at talentculture.com. I am your host, Megan M. Biro, and today we're talking about something that marries passion for recognizing and lifting up our people with a hard look at the business angle of employee recognition from someone who truly understands the ROI. But before we jump into today's podcast, go ahead and ask yourself these two questions. Number one, do you have an employee recognition plan, budget, or platform in place? And number two, if not, Would you like to start making your case to leadership to embrace this initiative? Wherever you are, we are here to connect some dots and have some fun along the way. Let's take a look at some important points to set the stage. Gallup and Work Human Research reminds us that employee recognition isn't simply saying thank you, although that's very important, and not all kinds of recognition are the same. Recognition can generally be divided into two subsets, top-down recognition coming from manager, leader, other supervisor, and peer-to-peer recognition coming from anyone up and down the organizational structure. A recent study by Gallup found that employees who received recognition only a few times a year from leaders were five times as likely to be actively disengaged and 74% more likely to say they did not plan to be at an organization in one year. And in just one month, moment, I'm going to introduce you to our guest. And here are some stats straight from Kudos, where our guest is the COO. So he knows what he's talking about. Get this. 92% of Kudos users say recognition makes them feel valued and appreciated. 86% of Kudos users say that recognition motivates them to do their best work. 85% say recognition has made them more engaged in their work. 77% of users say that recognition has made them more likely to stay with their company. Kudos users are 2.5 times more likely to be highly engaged in their work than the average employee. In a time when retention is of the utmost importance, it's critical to take a hard look at ways to improve workplace culture. Hold on to your employees and reap the rewards of better all overall performance. Here to discuss the topic of employee recognition is the COO of Kudos, Kareem Poonja. Kareem Poonja, COO at Kudos, is a CFA chart holder with over 15 years of experience in corporate financial management and planning. He has done extensive work in growth strategies, investments supporting new venture planning. Kareem loves the HR tech space where data-driven decisions are helping improve the world of work. You can find Kareem on LinkedIn and keep up with Kudos on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Kudos. So I am so happy you're here. Nice to be here. Welcome, welcome. I mean, we love talking about specific ways to improve workplace culture. So you have so much knowledge on this front, particularly when we start talking about a financial lens. So to kick things off, let's lay the foundation here. Recognition programs should be budgeted, planned, funded, and monitored, just like any other business-driven initiative. Let's talk about how to get started. So Kareem, how do you create a budget for an employee recognition platform? Yeah, well, I think there there are referenceable benchmarks. If one were to kind of look this up, it's typically, you know, what you see referenced is one to 3% of payroll or an employee's salary. But that being said, I think it really is dependent on the organization. And it's not necessarily a one size fits all approach. You kind of have to look at uh, what we what we call it kudos, your recognition culture and strategy, keeping in mind, you know, the worker type, the split between hourly and salaried workers, remote workers, and then the deskless workers as well. 
well, and whether or not you're going to use that uh, recognition platform as a, also a form or supplementing income as well through the rewards uh, that are associated with some of these platforms that are available. I mean, there's so many options, right? I love the fact that we're actually talking about this is how we plan for this. It doesn't just happen. You know, just drilling down a little bit more, there are specific things that companies may already be doing that they should look at, which may be consolidated into an employee engagement platform. Things like birthdays and and milestones, how you're currently managing that can be consolidated through an employee recognition and engagement system. When And if you choose to use the system to do some sort of spot bonusing, can also then be used as a mechanism to maybe reallocate some budget from an existing area that's already already been budgeted for and roll that into an employee engagement platform as well. Well, and I also think that organizations, if you're out there listening here at Work Trends, it doesn't matter what size, right? You may be new to this kind of initiative and this kind of insight could make it a lot easier to move ahead with confidence. I mean, the goal here is to get you to just start thinking strategically about this. Next question for you is, what are other considerations for budget benchmarks? How does some one properly research and identify who is to manage and actually implement the program. Yeah. So maybe splitting that into two, the managing of the implementation and the success of that type of program from the total cost of ownership of this type of system. So if we look at the management of the system, especially with larger organizations, it may require some real thought in terms of change management, how this is going to kind of get rolled out, who the key stakeholders are. And when when it comes to ownership of the system, you know, you may have one administrator within your organization that takes on that responsibility, but for the success of the program, really, it has to be a collective responsibility. You got to have good, I think, stakeholder buy-in from the executive team as well. And I think probably one of the most key elements in making uh, the program a success is to get your managers on board early as stakeholders and individuals who take ownership of adoption and usage of the system. And the reason that I mention that is even in our own studies, when we look at our clients, we see that clients that have high manager engagement experience on average three times more monthly participation from non-managers than those that have managers with low engagement within the system. So if you can get your managers on board and they're adopting and using the system, the use of that system throughout the organization will be significantly better. Well, and this is so helpful because let's all keep in mind something. There may need to be different brains in the room to appropriately handle the research, the management, the implementation, the user feedbacks, and other elements of the program. So something to keep in mind. Now let's take a short break to get an update from our advertiser, Included Health. Navigating healthcare isn't easy for your employees, whether they're trying to find an urgent care option in the middle of the night, they need help managing chronic conditions or addressing mental health concerns, or they're looking for clear answers about co-pays, coverage, and bills. Included Health gives your employees access to terrific doctors, insurance experts, and care coordinators available 24-7. And with benefits navigation and virtual care available in a single app, you and your employees can experience healthcare without the headaches. See why Included Health is trusted by 30% of Fortune 100 companies to improve care for their employees. Visit included.health slash talent. Included Health, designed to treat you better. Now, back to our podcast, where my guest, Kareem Punja from Kudos and me, are discussing the importance of employee recognition in the workplace and the best tactics for implementing this program. Let me ask you this, Kareem. How should HR leaders communicate the value of employee recognition to senior leadership and others in the organization? Yeah, it's an important question because as a CFO myself, I always get different proposals for investing in different software tools. So I think, you know, one key, I think, fundamental attribute of this type of system is around measurement. And I think it goes back to that core philosophy of you can't manage what you can't 
measure. And with an employee recognition system, you're able to get a system that provides measurable insights into your employee well-being. And when you overlay that against, you know, typical engagement surveys, you kind of see the impact of your culture over time when you look at the two things in conjunction with, with each other. And the way that I like to uh, kind of talk about the value associated with this system is that specifically with the metrics, employee engagement metrics are more of a leading indicator of health rather than lagging. And surveys, because they are point in time, give you a measure, but they are more lagging in terms of the sentiments that have taken place that have led up to that point. So when you look at your employee engagement platform and you see the metrics and the trends that are sort of happening real time, it gives you a leading indicator on sentiment and allows you to take some actionable insight proactively rather than reactively. Yeah, I mean, really, Kareem, it is, it's about leadership buy-in and modeling, right? That's the key to success for many employee initiatives. I think this really ought to help our audience. And if you're out there and you are an HR and, and a talent leader, which I know you, there's many of you out there that I hear from, you know, you can then effectively sell this idea to senior leadership and then to employees so it's actually used. So let's switch hats. Let's talk about recruiting and keeping quality talent. How does a company use an employee recognition program to retain and attract new talent? What's the latest and greatest here? Well, I think a recognition program can be looked at as a benefit. Um, similar to other benefits that organizations would promote. And so highlighting that in your job description, in your job profile, just as you would any other benefit is part of the value in recruiting talent. Having a recognition program is like any other benefit and should be something that's highlighted within a job description or a job profile. And on, on top of that, I think when you're looking at promoting yourself as a great place to work or applying for company awards, you typically will see details asking for how the company promotes and rewards individuals and recognizes them. And so this is a great way for organizations to be able to use those systems and the fact that they're investing in those systems to promote uh, their workplace culture as a brand. You know what I love about this conversation? We're having these like simultaneous aha and of course moments, right? Like who wouldn't want to work for somebody where they receive timely and helpful feedback, are regularly recognized and feel valued. Yet, you know, I'm still hearing today, you know, leaders, you still have to be committed to doing these things consistently and for everyone. And what I see in my daily wanderings here is we don't see that all the time. It's the consistency. It's including everybody in that I feel oftentimes is missing. Let's talk about what type of time is needed to do this. Like what is needed to implement and launch an employee recognition program? Probably depends on the complexity of your organization to some extent. Typically within our organization, what we've seen is that you can have a system like this up and running um, within six to eight weeks or less. That's our implementation cycle at Kudos with our clients. The planning for that as an organization prior to purchasing would probably involve going into budgeting or planning cycles where you give yourself enough time to investigate that cost benefit relationship in implementing a system like this. Um, as mentioned before, you know, there can be budgets that can be reallocated based on certain things that you're already investing in or certain activities that you're in already investing in that may be consolidated within an employee engagement platform. Spot bonuses, if you're doing birthdays, milestones, and anniversaries outside of the system manually, those things all become automated. And so the costs associated with running some of those programs outside of an automated system then help towards building that business case as well. And researching some of those things obviously is important prior to um, any type of uh, budget and decision making on the system itself. Yeah, I mean, no question. This is very helpful for our listeners here at Talent Culture, especially as we're planning for end of year and the new calendar year. It's really important to set realistic timelines for implementing new programs. I mean, it's certainly not going to happen overnight, but at least we're talking about it and we're thinking in a more strategic way. Okay, Kareem, last question for today. How do you see the industry changing regarding how we understand the benefits of employee recognition, rewards, and 
and appreciation. Well, I think, you know, if we if we kind of take a look at the operating environment today, it's a fairly fairly challenging kind of work environment that we're all faced with. Uh, employee happiness and well-being are pretty much at the forefront whenever we're looking at the news or looking at trends in, in, in the workplace. So I think recognition uh, and rewards and appreciation fit right into that narrative as something that becomes more of a critical investment. And I think another thing that's interesting that we've seen as well is that recognition and positive workplace culture can also contribute to or be referenceable for things like ESG, the S in ESG specifically, or when companies are trying to demonstrate how they're a good corporate citizen through their CSR efforts. So I think there's something tangible there that you can use uh, that's referenceable when companies are looking at, you know, how they're able to articulate what they're doing for their employees and how they're being a good corporate citizen as well. And I think, you know, maybe the third or fourth thing to mention there is that managers today are under a lot of pressure. And the more tools that managers have at their uh, disposal based on the workplace dynamics that are there today, the better equipped they will be to face some of those challenges. And I think giving them the ability to have a real-time system like this to recognize and appreciate their team and their staff is, is an important tool to provide for them. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I have to ask you this question. Does it matter on how many employees an organization has, how you view all this from a strategic point? point of view or not necessarily I would say not necessarily I think that the you know the same challenges are there whether you're a small organization or a large entity the complexity would lie in all the different type of individuals within the organization the worker types and uh, you know your strategy around how to deal with that within uh, a recognition and engagement platform but the idea of having an, a recognition and engagement platform I think is essential for any size of organization in the environment that we're working in today. Kareem Punja, you have given us a lot to take in and digest today. Thanks for having me. You got it. Thanks for being here and sharing your sage. Yeah, I hope the uh, the listeners got some good value and can take this away for any of their planning that they're doing right now. Thanks so much. We have uncovered a lot today about how to shift our paradigm from employee recognition as a nice to have to must have to remain competitive in this workplace landscape. To recap, some top takeaways from today's conversation include, number one, assemble a team representing finance, HR, and senior leadership as you build a case for an employee recognition platform and program. You're going to want to understand the cost of doing nothing and how to measure a successful program's ROI. Number two, it's critical as you make your case that you can present the lowered cost, right? The added benefits of lower turnover, less absenteeism, and less attrition, as well as higher customer engagement and more sales productivity, all of which can be connected to actively embracing employee recognition. Number three, employee recognition programs can be effective in the entire life cycle of an employee, from recruitment to onboarding, to job promotions and active retention. Think through the needs of employees at these different different stages to ensure your workplace culture nurtures these various types of individuals. And listeners, please be sure to check out kudos.com. The site is full of great resources, blogs, webinars, you name it. And last but not least, we here at the Talent Culture Community, we want to hear from you. Do you feel like your organization could benefit from an employee recognition platform? Do you have examples of how embracing employee recognition efforts positively impacted your workplace? And how can you play a role as soon as today in promoting more recognition-based culture. Think about that. Visit us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram to share your responses to these questions or feel free to contact me personally at Megan M. Bureau on the socials or email. And as always, thanks for listening to the Work Trends Podcast. It's a place to find meaningful connections at work. If you love what we do here, make sure to share our podcast with your friends and colleagues, your family, you name it, and send us a question on social media using the hashtag hashtag work trends. See you next time.